in my cash. It looks like I'm doing about one of these videos per season. The last time I spoke with you, it was springtime. And now we're in the thick of fall. There's a lot going on. There's supposed to be a comet that's going to be passing very close to our sun soon. And then it's going to pass our Earth. And then it's going to spread all of its contents into the atmosphere and possibly rain down on us. And in the meantime, there could be catastrophic weather. So I just wanted to talk to you all before the shift happens because I've been planning for it for a long time. And I have to say that I'm looking forward to the shift. And because I'm at peace and I have been working on realigning myself with nature. Nature is not my enemy. So I'm talking about self-sustainability. There's never been more reason to have an extended family or a polygynous family than now. Because the movies that I've seen about what happens after the shift, like I Am Legend, I don't think any of us want to be out there alone. So the more people we have close to us, the better. The more like-minded people we have close to us, the better. So what I'm saying is, although the polygyny movement seems to be picking up momentum amongst the sisters, I'm so proud of that. And I thank all of you for your wonderful comments and your appreciation for me sharing my experience with you. Although I am not an expert and I'm still working through my challenges and my family, it's coming along. We've had some really groundbreaking, heartwarming, tear-jerking situations that only bring us closer together. And I really appreciate every single experience because as long as it's made in love, then there's progress being made. That circle of love is the circle of life. And I've discovered that the people that end up loveless are the ones who die. I don't care how well you take care of yourself, how good you eat. At the end of the day, like in the movie Mahogany, if you have no one to share it with, then it means nothing. And especially since nothing material just about nothing material is going to be left. What will you have? All you have is your family. And that's the only thing that's important. So the circle of love must be continued, must be completed. Unconditional love is only one side of the coin. Because unconditional love is unconditional giving, unconditional sharing, and that is truly in my eye. Without expectation, of receiving anything in return and that's okay because in a circle of love called polygyny if you're giving love to someone and that very someone does not give the love back to you there's someone else in that circle who will love you just the same and that's how we become nourished and that's how we're able to continue nourishing and the circle of love the circle of life continues in a polygynous family. However, in a monogamous situation where there's not enough love to go around and people use phrases like familiarity breeds contempt, our nature abhors a void. Nature doesn't abhor anything. Nature is in harmony and at peace with everything. And that sounds like something a man might have said. So before you use quotes, figure out where it came from. Because whatever you speak is what you'll have. And in a monogamous situation, that seems to be where that term or that phrase derived. Familiarity, the word family is in there. So why would you have contempt for your family? And there's some people that say you shouldn't mix business with family never work with your family. All of those things have kept us in a dysfunctional state. Have you seen that to be functional? I lived in New York for a period of time and I didn't see any of the Jews in that community saying not to work for your family. It was taboo. 
or that familiarity breeds contempt? Contempt, a bore, those are English words. And I would doubt they even have any meaning in any indigenous culture. So we want to eliminate those terms and those phrases because unity is where you'll find balance and togetherness and sharing. All of those are the principles of our ancient ancestors. Right here and in the continent we call Africa. Unity, togetherness. The concepts are written on the walls of the pyramids, as is the prophecy. And the prophecy is that we are in a time of the feminine. And that's what I'm saying. This is the time of the feminine. And this is the time for the men and the women to truly walk next to each other. And in a polygynous environment, since here in the United States, it's safer for the men to not be in the forefront of this polygyny movement. And although it might be something new, it might be something different, it doesn't make it wrong. Because we're not trying to repeat anything that has come from the past. We don't want to be called concubines again. We don't want first and second and third wives and the fourth wife isn't less than the first wife. No. I understand that the original monogamous family that wants to expand their family should have a tight bond because they are the foundation. But when you welcome a sister into your home, you know that she is just as valuable as you are. And if she's balanced, she'll understand and respect that your experience means the world to her. And it's not that you're more important or she's more important because she's new. You know, because some people have a tendency to think that way. Not that the elder, the one with the most experience is the most valuable, but the newest is the most valuable. And there's no balance either way. Across the board, my art is balanced, where everybody is appreciated for who they are. The newness and the experience. And that is the continuation of the circle of love. That is self-sustainability. People survive and live and thrive off of the greatest healer, and that's love. And so as long as we keep that circle of love in circulation, and people are giving love, and people are receiving love, then we will be self-sustained. We don't need anything else. Babylon can fall, and we will rise. Because we can't fall any further down. I think we can all agree that we've been just about as far on the bottom as you can get. And so now our time is to rise. And it's funny because I saw Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And there was lots of Omic Mayan symbolism in that movie. Um, I also enjoyed Inception. I also enjoyed Limitless. Right? And that is the concept of the Omic Mayan cosmology system. And people don't even know it, but their religions as well speak of limitlessness. But they are the ones. Men put the limits on things. Now, that doesn't mean that there doesn't need to be discipline and order. Because the universe is in order and in balance. And the reason why nature can't abort, abhor, avoid, because there are no voids in nature. Perhaps the person that coined that phrase, instead of looking somewhere else for something else and always feeling like the grass is greener on the other side, perhaps is not even able to see the forest or the trees and what they always thought that they didn't have they had to get from someplace else because they thought there was a void. They always had it right in front of them. So reevaluate your thinking process. And I really strongly urge the men to step aside because this is to benefit you in so many ways. You don't want to be a target of being a bigamist. Let me choose the women that are going to come into the household. There's always a constant challenge that almost doesn't subside when you control things in a polygynous environment. But if the women have a genuine love for each other, do you know how much further you can get and not have to deal with some of the trivialities that you have to deal with because you may have made some choices based on your physical nature? And now everybody has to live with those choices.
and try to make it work. When in fact, you should step to the side, to the side, and let's walk together hand in hand and build this empire and build this foundation to sustain us through these shifts. So, if anybody is abreast of uh, the comet Elenin, the planet Nibiru, or the prophecy of the Hopi that speaks about the blue Kachina and the red Kachina, if in fact we're in those times, what I want to say to you is that I love you. And I want the circle of love to continue. And I hold you in my thoughts and in my prayers. And I don't do that conditionally. It would be very nice if you return it back to me. And keep the circle of love going through eternity through infinity and beyond.